Frank and welcome back to Travel Tips. Today we're going to Japan, one of my favorite countries. I've been there four or five times speaking and presenting and I always take some extra time out to see the country. It's an amazing place and what I want to speak about today is Tokyo because that's a place I go most of the time when I'm there. Now, if we look at the money, they have the yen, and it's roughly about 140 yen to the pound, about 108 to the dollar. And uh, the one thing, if you get into the airport, the airport is great, but Japan, you have to understand, is very non-English friendly. Also, if you take a cab from the airport, it's about an hour into Tokyo, into the city, it's going to cost you around $200. So what you must do is take the JR Narita Express luxury bus. It's fantastic. I think they run about every 30 minutes or so, but please don't take a taxi. It's going to cost you an absolute fortune. Uh, also, be careful when you're using taxis in Japan and uh, especially in Tokyo. Uh, use the ones with the yellow plates, not the green ones. The green ones are the illegal drivers. So be a little bit careful over there. Also, when you're taking a taxi, always have the address written down. Because remember, they cannot speak English. So every hotel I go to, if I'm going to go to a shopping center or anywhere, I get them to write it down. But I also get the hotel's address. So when I get into a cab, I can give it to them and they'll take me back. When it comes to tipping in Japan, tipping is a no-no. Uh, in fact, uh, in Japan they have a thing called face and whatever you tip them is not going to be enough so they would rather not lose face than not have a tip. So please don't try tipping your taxi driver. Uh, they will give you the exact change back again. The culture over there, the people are very organized, very smart and always be on time business culture, you've also got to understand their traditions and their etiquette. I remember quite a few years ago I was going to be doing some work with Panasonic in Japan and I had to actually go on a one-day training course uh, to learn about the culture before I got there. Because uh, what they would think, what we would think is normal, like if you've got a cold you take out a handkerchief, you blow your nose, you put it back into your pocket. That's probably the most disgusting thing to them. So you've got to be thinking about those kinds of things. Also the things like the business card, they give it to you with two hands. You take it with two hands, you look at it lovingly, you grunt, you make a lot of noise. Never with the one hand. Um, also remember a lot of the business is done after hours. So be prepared for some heavy drinking and some wild karaoke. So get that singing voice on there. Prices are pretty high. Food, drink, hotels, you'll be paying anything food with 1,000 to 3,000 yen. For a four-star hotel, you'll be paying about $250. For a five-star, starting at about $350. And the rooms are tiny. I normally like to stay in the Ginza district, which is the main business and shopping district. And uh, first time I went there, I paid a fortune for a hotel. I was expecting, like America, a big hotel room. Got there, the room was tiny. I thought they'd made a mistake. I went down and they said, no, that's the standard room. So be prepared for smaller rooms over there. Tap water, tap water, yes, you can drink anywhere in Japan. It's clean. Like the rest of the country, everything works. It is organized, it is safe. Stacks and stacks of things to do. There's all of the temples and shrines. And again, like I always say, do the one day hop on, hop off bus tour, especially in the city, because there's a lot you can see there. What I would recommend is we did the one day tour, which was great. It went out to Fiji, which was lovely. But remember when you go, I went in February, it was freezing. I didn't have a coat with me and the Japanese are quite small people. I could not get a coat anywhere that fitted me because I'm like King Kong and they just didn't have King Kong size. So we went out to Fiji and then you go on to the Lake Ashi cruise, which was wonderful. From there you get onto the bullet train. And I want to tell you, that is just amazing. In fact, we're standing in the station and we're waiting for our bullet train. Another one approaches and I thought, let me take a picture. And by the time I got my camera over here, it was passed again. They are just like, boom, so fast. Also go to the Samurai Museum. They've got Disneyland there, of course. And shopping, there are some great, great shopping districts. But you're going to pay a fortune 
Shinjuku is a great district. Ginza, of course, where I always like to stay, very, very high end. Shibuya. Um, do your homework before you go. Figure out where to go. You can also use the underground MTR system. And I believe they have some sing uh, English signs now. When I was there, they didn't have it. So just be sure you organize everything. Because remember, it is very, very non-English friendly. Not like most other countries. Um, you're a guest in their country. Learn their traditions and learn your way around. Also, be used to people staring at you. You know, I love to just try new things. So I was there once and I thought, let me just get into a train and I'm just going to go out. And when I feel like it, I'm going to get off and walk around. I don't know where it's going to be. Got onto the train, went out into the country and just got off at a station and started walking around. Little did I know that very few Europeans were there. I had uh, the women were giggling and staring and pointing at me. Little children were running up and touching and giggling. And uh, I was like a thing of amusement to them. There are some do's and don'ts over there. Learn about the bowing tradition. When to bow, when to come up in business, how forward to bow. Don't bow with your neck. You've got to bow with your full body. So learn that whole etiquette over there. Uh, don't walk and smoke or walk and eat. That's it's just not nice to do. And the other thing is learn the etiquette with using chopsticks. I mean, things like if you've got your chopsticks, and you go into the main bowl and you're taking some rice out, that's really bad because you've got tainted, you've been using yours, so use another set of chopsticks. When you're finished, don't leave it in your bowl because that signifies bad luck as well. When you're finished, put it down, you'll have a little chopstick stand, put it on there. So again, do your homework before you go. Uh, it was funny, when we were there, we went to one of the local places that make... Uh, I don't know, you've each got your own little stove in front of you. So we had no clue what to do. We walked in there, we paid and we sat down in front of this little stove and they, they, they brought us some stuff and we were sort of looking next to us. We had no clue what to do. Fortunately, uh, the Japanese guy next to us came and he showed us what to do and it was just a great, great experience. But if he wasn't there, I wouldn't have known what to do. Also, if you toasting somebody, say Kampai, again, Learn some of the basics. Please, thank you. Where is the toilet? Uh, please bring me the menu. Whatever country you go to, learn all of those basics. And uh, a couple of funny things over there that you've also got to be aware of over there. If a funeral car is going past, hide your thumb. Don't whistle at night. Interesting. Don't whistle at night unless you want a snake coming to you. Don't lie down after eating unless you want to turn into a cow. Don't lie north when you're sleeping because that's the way you are laid down when you die. Don't cut your nails at night unless you want to be with your parents when they die. So really interesting things over there. It's just a fascinating culture, uh, an amazing country. I mean, when you go into their gadget shops, you've never seen anything like it. Their music shops, I love music, unbelievable music shops. And the thing that fascinated me most was the toilets. Because every toilet seat is like a gadget. I mean, you can have heated toilet seats and then they've got like a little machine next to you. And when you finish doing your business, you can have a spray, all different kinds of sprays. I mean, you can sit and play with this thing. It's fantastic. So that's one of the places you've got to put on your list of places to go and see. It's Japan and especially Tokyo. An amazing, amazing place. Hey, this is Frank. Thanks for watching Travel Tips. Hey, this is Frank. Thanks for listening to Travel Tips.